loud, please. Cool, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to the uh, 2020 uh, officer elections info session. Uh, so the goal of today's meeting, um, we're gonna walk you through our uh, election process for this upcoming spring. Um, we're going to tell you guys about the roles we have open, um, uh, just a little bit about what to expect uh, going through the application. And uh, yeah, and then after that, it's uh, we're opening up to Q&A. So uh, answer any questions you guys might have. Um, and yeah, I think we can go ahead and uh, move forward. So um, about Cougar CS, I'm sure you guys are sick of seeing the slide by now. Uh, you see it at uh, every single event. But uh, here's just a, a reminder about our uh, mission statement and uh, what our goals are on campus. Um, you know, at, at, a, at a basic level, we our goal is to transition students into young professionals. Uh, we want to foster community uh, around uh, diversity, inclusion, um, you know, in the, the space of technology and uh, provide mentorship and academic support uh, for all students. Um, yeah, go ahead and click through the next. Um, a bit about our goals for uh, next spring. So this fall, <laughs> we had a really fantastic semester. Um, it was definitely really stressful. We entered the semester with um, a pretty much brand new team. Uh, aside from uh, Shub and Shuba and myself, uh, every single officer was uh, brand new. And um, despite like despite uh, what, what, what like a lot of perceived rockiness or like what we thought would be a lot of a lot of rockiness, I think we had a really fantastic reentry uh, back in person. Um, we doubled our member count to an all time high in the uh, past five years. Uh, right now we're sitting at 250 members and. That's the most we've been, uh, the highest member count we've been at in a, in a very significant period of time. Um, Shuba and, uh, and our marketing and our, um, what is it, marketing and corporate relations team raised over $17,000 in sponsorships. Um, we delivered a ton of really awesome events and um, we delivered the largest hackathon uh, on campus with over 300 participants. Um, next semester, we're really hungry to continue the same success. Uh, there's over 1,500 uh, students in CS uh, at University of Houston. And at 250 members, we're only capturing, you know, just a, a small piece of that pie. Uh, we really want to grow our org further. Uh, we want to connect with students across different um, majors. We have a, right now, I'd say maybe 80% of our members are just within computer science. Um, but, you know, our org is not just focused on, um, on computer science. We kind of want to cover uh, computer uh, programming and uh, technology as a, as a whole. So we really want to, you know, reach these other uh, majors better. Uh, another big element that we want to improve on is, uh, you know, creating a, a, a better, basically connecting students with each other and fostering a community uh, better than we have been. Uh, you know, we want to do this through hosting more socials, uh, you know, doing some events where we can actually engage members with each other. So, you know, basically create that community of, of friends, uh, you know, so people aren't feeling so separated or, you know, uh, basically kind of creating a, a social environment uh, and making us stronger in the org. Uh, we want to increase turnout and uh, member engagement at events. And uh, we're looking to spearhead a new academic and career mentorship program. Uh, and we'll, we'll get back to that in a moment. But I think we can go ahead and step forward. Important cool. dates. So um, guys, if you guys are interested in becoming an officer, the applications are open right now. They're closing on November 12th. So go ahead and fill out your applications as soon as possible. And as you guys are uh, filling out the applications for the non-executive positions, we'll start interviewing all the applicants from November 7th until the November 26th. And the executive positions, which we'll go over shortly, um, we'll have we'll held a general election on November 18th for that. All the positions and officers uh, will be announced on November 30th. Um, so make sure to come to our fall banquet to check out who all are the new officers. Yeah, plus it's gonna be a really great time. Come out to the fall banquet. Um, actually, if you could uh, I click to that I for really quick. Um, I just want to touch on the um, elections. Uh, so there's going to be uh, executive for the executive officer positions. We're going to do a um, general election. This is basically going to be a member wide vote uh, where every single one of our members is going to receive a unique ballot um, to vote. The during during this um, in person meeting officer general election, we're going to uh, Every single candidate will uh, give a good speech, and then um, after the speech, we'll record it, uh, put it online, and then um, every member will have an opportunity to vote on the uh, executive officer. Um, and then for the interviews, uh, Shub will speak more on this in a second. Cool. So uh, for the, can you go to the next slide? So for the non-executive seats, we'll start interviewing people uh, from November, 12, uh, November 7th. 
Um, this is basically going to be interview. Uh, the interview is basically going to be held by two Kubernetes officers. Um, it would be like a 45 minute uh, meeting where it would be mostly casual informal chats. Um, it's a time where we can learn about your background and learn more about what experience you're bringing to the table. And also it's a chance for you to kind of ask us questions about the positions, uh, clarify any questions you have, and for you to know like what it is like to be a Kubernetes officer. Um, so definitely if you're applying, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send you an email after you apply to kind of schedule something. And the timeline is uh, kind of big. So every, everybody should be able to schedule something in that time period. Um, yeah. And, uh, and like Shu mentioned, I mean, it's, it's very casual and formal, nothing to be intimidated about. Um, we're all students, so it's really just a conversation. We want to see, um, you know, we, we want to just understand your character and, and see where you'd fit uh, best in the, in the org, you know? Yeah, definitely. And if you're applying for multiple uh, positions as well, um, there would only be one interview where we'll cover all positions. Um, and we might ask you for like a position that you're strongly going for, like your first preference. So that would kind of help us make a decision when you're going over all the all the interviews and comparing your notes and stuff. Um, at, oh, can you go to the next slide? So um, these are all the positions that are open for the next semester. Um, there is one executive position, which is vice president activities. All these other positions are going to be uh, picked by interviews. For the vice president activities, we'll help we'll help the general election where everybody, all the members would get a chance to vote. But all these other uh, positions would be based on appointments. So go ahead and apply to as many positions you're interested in, and we'll we'll interview you and make a decision based on that. So handing it off to Nicholas will tell you more about vice president activities. You're muted, Nicholas. Thank you very much. I keep hitting. I'm I'm on the I'm on the Mac with the touch bar, and I keep hitting the mute and video button. If you guys see me like flashing on and off. Um, so, okay, the first position, and this is a brand new position uh, at, at, at our, on our team, but this is a vice president activities. So uh, essentially the, 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 the role of uh, VP activities, uh, aside from what's bulleted here, is to basically provide leadership to uh, our marketing and uh, activities uh, functional groups uh, within the organization. Um, we have this year, this upcoming semester, we're planning on having uh, four officers in the marketing area. That's gonna be uh, director of communications, director of marketing, um, historian and designer. And then uh, we're also planning to have um, four officers in our activities, which would be um, director of um, socials, um, workshops, and corporate relations, as well as director of operations. So this is, you know, eight, this, that's an eight person team already. Uh, and essentially the, the goal with the VP activities is to provide leadership uh, in that area. Um, uh, the main, the, the name of the game when it comes to leadership is basically providing communication, making sure that no one's confused, everyone's on the same page. And um, kind of being a, 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 court, a, a coordination figure, uh, you know, between these uh, eight officers, um, and yeah, and, and I mean the the duties are listed here. Um, as VP activities, you would actually be one of the top three officers of the organization. Um, just for those of you who might be unaware about, about how RSOs work, but um, for every RSO, there's a uh, three um, there's three uh, uh, official officers, the first, second, and third chairs, and uh, VP activities would, is one of those chairs. So. Uh, it, it, it's, it's one of the uh, new executive roles. So I think we can uh, step forward. All right. So <clears throat> speaking on the Code Red vice president role, um, your plan or your goal is to organize before next semester, before and during next semester, is to organize, plan, and execute the Code Red Hackathon team, Code Red Hackathon organizing team, I should say. Um, your job would be to sort of recruit, advertise, and interview these these officer positions and and get them on board to organize the hackathon over the course of um, next semester, fall, and over the summer. Or next semester is spring and then summer. Um, and then you're supposed to manage communication between CareerCS and CodeRed. CodeRed is a hackathon organized by CareerCS. Um, if you did not attend, or if you had not attended CodeRed, it's basically a hackathon where you can create um, projects based based on some challenges, and um, your job is to sort of be a um, intermediary between the two to sort of um, I don't know, what would be the word for that. Um, basically, Code Red is like a hackathon. Curse is the organization or organization that uh, presents the hackathon. You're supposed to sort of be the person that communicates 
what's going on in Code Red to Curious and um, and yeah, be that person for that. Um, her job is to work with the director of corporate relationships to secure sponsorships um, and raise money for Code Red. And um, what you do there is sort of reach out to companies, um, pitch Code Red to them, and see if their company would be right fit for Code Red, and have them come out to the event um, and and sort of present their companies to the participants. And the other, other goal is to um, carry out the career CS mission, which is to empower all uh, CS students and basically all students throughout their academic journey to their professional career. Um, and you're supposed to do that through Code Red, and you're supposed to serve as the official spokesperson for Code Red, which means anything that deals with Code Red, you're supposed to be responsible and um, sort of help facilitate any sort of um, conflict or um, sort of help become the communication person for Code Red. Um, one of the biggest thing that you'll learn as a director of Code Red is that you'll get to um, really learn how to be a leader. There's going to be about four to five teams and um, 14 officers throughout those teams. Um, those teams include like the political team, the marketing team, the communication team, the HR team, the website team. You're supposed to kind of work together with different teams, help help increase efficiency and communication between those teams and sort of help those team help each other deliver the code red. Um, you're supposed to have the vision for the hackathon and see where the hackathon is going and sort of be the pillar um, for code red. One of the other thing you'll sort of grow um, with this role is that you'll grow not only as a leader, but also as a person and a professional. You're gonna be working with companies and other uh, organizations and other campuses even to, to deliver code red. And uh, you'll grow in a professional sense where you'll be able to handle all communication between the different um, different aspects and different type of, types of people. Um, the other thing, other great thing about Picture of Code Red is that you get to sort of network with companies, network with the organizing team um, and meet a lot of people. Um, and, you know, like meeting these companies will also help you in a way to secure jobs um, if you're interested in that co particular company. Um, so that's one of the other reasons that um, you should become a director of Code Red. Um, but yeah, your essential goal is to help bring um, Code Red Hackathon. It's hopefully gonna be in person next semester um, or not next semester, next year around. Um, your job is to work with all the organizing team to, to, to deliver that event. Right. I mean, uh, just, just to kind of, uh, you know, build on uh, what Shubh said, uh, Shubh said, you know, this is, this role is um, definitely a, a big undertaking. I'd say of all the roles that we have uh, open, this is uh, the greatest opportunity for uh, leadership. And, uh, you know, for those who are hungry to take on a challenge, uh, this is definitely high visibility. Um, you know, like, like Shubha said, you, you work with companies on one, like entering, going into this summer, uh, Shuba and I never had experience, uh, you know, in these company scenarios. And I have to say, like, both of us, I feel like got a lot, very comfortable uh, talking to company representatives and, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of understanding, like speaking to business need and, uh, you know, selling, uh, selling this event. Um, it's a big undertaking, but uh, like definitely uh, what you create is much larger than yourself. Uh, you assemble your own team of, uh, you know, however many this, this semester, Shuba has assembled a team of 14 people. And um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a pretty big undertaking. And uh, we, uh, this, this semester, we held online uh, over 300 participants over, uh, was it $12,000 in prizes? I mean, it was a pretty crazy event. Uh, so yeah, the, as, as VP Code Red, you, you basically take the lead on this. Okay, cool. So uh, another new uh, another new position that we have this semester is director of marketing. Um, the the goal here is to coordinate marketing between the uh, marketing team. So uh, earlier I mentioned that there's a marketing team is a team of four, which consists of a uh, director of marketing, uh, director of communications, uh, historian, and designer. Um, what, it would surprise you guys the amount of like thoughts that goes into um, the the ad, you know regular announcements that you guys see us post uh, on our on our different platforms, right? And uh, the amount of thought that goes into, you know, how do we drive engagement? How do we get a good turnout at our events? Um, the role of director of marketing is basically to uh, address that, address, you know, this area, um, you know, head, head, head on. And to also uh, break up the responsibilities, because originally we had a three-person marketing team. And, uh, you know, 
to do things at, at like the standard that we wish to hold, we, we found it's much easier to kind of break things out into individual roles that uh, you know have less responsibilities and uh, are able to stay focused. So uh, for director of marketing, um, the idea is aside from uh, coordinating the marketing and outreach strategy uh, within the marketing team is to basically manage our platforms. So, you know, we have a LinkedIn, you know, Discord, GroupMe, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and Linktree. Um, essentially, director of marketing would be the one who uh, coordinates with the marketing team and uh, coordinates with the uh, VP activities to have an understanding of, you know, what are our events coming up and put everything in a central location and uh, basically keep things organized within the team. Um, the director of marketing is also the person who makes the post to uh, Instagram. So uh, all, all the posts on Instagram would be kind of managed by this person. So um, for this role, there aren't any requirements, but definitely uh, those of you who have a, a who have a passion for social media or you know are, are familiar with um, you know driving engagement stuff like that, uh, this is a really a really interesting opportunity for you to gain uh, uh, gain leadership, teamwork, and uh, and and real experience uh, on a on a large organization. Um, you know, managing a pretty value, a pretty important asset. I'd say like, uh, you know, we can do amazing events. We can put our blood, uh, soul and energy into creating these really uh, awesome uh, opportunities for our members and students. But, you know, if we don't get the word out there and we don't, you know, actually get people to come and check it out, uh, we're, 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 we only have to have to puzzle solve. So this is definitely a, a very important uh, cornerstone of, um, of the organization. So uh, designer, uh, I'll go ahead and pass it off to uh, Janice, who is our current designer. Okay, hello, I'm Janice, I'm the current designer. And so basically the designer designs event advertisements for social media and designs weekly event summaries and just like illustrates graphics for Cougar CS. Basically anything, any of the graphics you see on Instagram and uh, Discord and uh, GroupMe, that's all created by me. And um, so for the designer, the designer uses Canva for making the posts. Um, personally, I don't think you need to have experience in graphic design beforehand. You, it helps to have a good eye and um, art and just like visual, visual design, but you don't need to actually know how to do graphic design beforehand. And I'm willing to like help out the next designer on that before they actually start. And uh, uh, could you kind of I, I, um, could you speak on maybe like the, the time commitment or like I guess how, how much uh, how like time consuming was it for you um, with the, all the events that we had this semester? Um, in the beginning, I'd say is the was the busiest when uh, like in September where there are like tons of events happening like the career fair and all the company events. So that would that was when like there were uh, two to three posts per week. So we'd be like doing like three designs a week and it could, that is when it's the busiest, but after that, it's really not that big of a time commitment. Good on, cool. All right, hello everybody, I'm Christian. Uh, I'm the current historian. Uh, so as for the oncoming uh, historian for next semester, uh, primary thing would be to be in charge of all the photography for all the events, meetings, etc. Um, that is basically the most important thing to you know keep track of uh, Cougar CS, in, like in terms of uh, in a, in a media form. Uh, so you also need to be available to take uh, professional headshots for our members. Um, that's something that we we offer to our members. They have four uh, professional headshots that they can take and have not to pay anything and they can use it for LinkedIn or whatever they need it to use it for. Um, you're also a little bit in charge of managing social media, kind of working with the director of marketing for the next semester uh, to help make sure everything is executed on time and everything. Um, and then also you're in a way, you're kind of promoting Cougar CS with the pictures and some of the content you create through like videos. And uh, if you, if, one of the plans it does become to be make a video. Uh, and the re biggest requirement, of course, is to have a camera. Uh, it doesn't really matter to be a high-end camera as long as you have a camera. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be anything expensive, just as long as you have like a DSLR or anything like that, at least, and you'll be fine. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I mean, the uh, uh, story plays a pretty, uh, pretty important role. You know, we want to document our events and, you know, uh, capture all the moments that, uh, you know, we, we have uh, you know, all, all this member engagement. Um, definitely a, a fun role. Uh, 
pretty much um, the the only like I guess re requirement aside from uh, having a camera is uh, being available for at, at least uh, most of our in person events. Um, fortunately, most I'd say most of our events nowadays are, are like we do a, a good amount of hybrid uh, or mostly like online. Um, so there isn't like too too often that you need to be in person. And then uh, if, if there's ever a case when we have an in person event and, and you're not available, essentially your, your role just be just to, to delegate that responsibility to um, someone who is who is available. Um, to you know, take pictures at the event. So definitely a, a fun role. And then uh, as well as uh, managing our social media. So the historian uh, kind of works with the director of marketing to um, kind of bring our social media to, together. Oh yeah, just to also kind of cover the good things about being a historian. Uh, for me personally, it was a great way to dipping my toes uh, into the water for Cougar CS because I was, I was new to the org and I didn't know much, but I definitely wanted to get involved. And so I went ahead and applied. Um, there's, you don't, you don't have to know Cougar CS for uh, like a long time or anything like that. You know, so, so long as you're, you're interested and you're willing to help, uh, and, uh, you, you want to take pictures and get involved. Yeah, that's, that, that's definitely true. I, I mean, for all, all of the roles that we're showing you guys today, uh, you don't need to have prior involvement, uh, with Cougar CS. Uh, of course that helps like w when you're applying, but, um, you know, mm -hmm. we, we're looking at all, all the candidates in, in terms of, a. Uh, you know what, what's your energy what's your what's your drive are you guys interested in you know being a part of and helping us deliver on our mission statement so definitely yeah prior involvement's not involved or not required cool so uh director of mentoring so this is a, a new this is another uh, new position um essentially uh this is kind of in the area of student development um to kind of be um, a program similar to our tutoring program, but more focused on uh, academic and peer guidance. Uh, where our tutoring program, uh, we have a bunch of tutors who you can come and ask for help for your classes. Um, our tutors provide academic support, like we'll help you with your homework and we'll, um, you know, uh, provide, uh, yeah, pretty much just homework help and any programming help in general. Uh, they're meant to, you know, kind of help your academic development. Uh, director of mentoring, uh, we, the goal here is to start a, a mentorship program. Uh, where people can come to get uh, academic and career guidance. So the difference there is, you know, a question you might ask your tutor is, you know, can you help me with my homework? Uh, for a mentor, the question you might ask them is, you know, what class should I take next semester? Uh, what are, um, you know, what are um, like professors I should avoid? Uh, things like that. Um, the idea of a director of mentoring is to basically recruit uh, a handful of mentors, um, and, it, and and you know, mentors would be kind of an informal uh, role, but. You know, uh, it's we want to create a uh, sense of community and a kinship among students and member mentors. Um, the mentors can be kind of like your big sibling, uh, someone who's a bit senior, uh, have been to, has been going to University of Houston, uh, you know, longer than you, and can offer you perspective on, uh, you know, academic and career things. Uh, another goal of the mentorship program is to kind of, you know, like, like I said, you know, be be a big sibling and also bring bring uh, members into events. You know, it's it's much easier for someone to. Maybe like for more shy, our more shy members, you know, it's much easier for them to want to come to an in-person event when they already know someone who's there and, you know, they're getting an, an invite, right? Like, um, you know, they, we have this like mentorship program where uh, mentors can say, hey, you know, uh, why, why don't you, why don't you come out? Like, come, come meet, meet with me um, at the event. So uh, it, another, you know, another goal here is to kind of um, uh, facilitate kinship and, uh, you know, build that, that sense of community. Um, Another goal of the mentor program is, you know, since, since this program is going to be very close to the members, uh, we want to, uh, you know, understand member interests and kind of uh, survey, uh, you know, what are, what are, are we doing right? Are we having events that are interesting enough? Uh, like, uh, what are members wanting to hear? Uh, you know, that's another goal of the mentorship program. And then um, organize and manage the mock interview program. So this is a, a program that we have in, in beta right now, or I should say alpha. We're kind of, uh, Shub uh, has kind of uh, kicked off this. I don't know if Shub, if you want to touch on it a little bit, but um, yeah, actually, uh, yes, Shub, I don't know if you have any um, comments on the uh, mock interview program. So uh, mock interviews are very important for computer science majors because interviews are a critical step in your getting your offers. Um, so we're, we're trying to kick off a mock interview program where we can give you a little bit of experience on technical and behavioral part of the interviews. So as a director of mentoring, you'll be responsible for kind of uh, putting together interviewers and uh, putting together like a timeline where people can book the interviewers and get these resources available to them. So um, director of mentoring is basically like managing the mock interviewing program. If you have enough expertise, you could also be like interviewing people. But it's a it's a it's a beta program right now. We're we're trying to explore 
all the things that we can do with them. So as a director of mentoring, you'll be like definitely um, taking it from beta into like putting and kicking it off to like something that everybody can actually use. Mm -hmm. And doing it in a way that's, um, you know, uh, I guess sustainable, it's sustainable to do like an, a light workload. Uh, director of mentoring is another a big leadership position. Um, you know, uh, to, to you know to execute this role well uh, is to you know have a a, a low a, a low weekly commitment. You know, uh, less than five hours a week. Uh, you, if you uh, you really want to delegate uh, the, the responsibilities, uh, you know, build a team of mentors who can um, kind of manage groups of students, and then uh, just connecting students who want to you know have a mock interview and some practice ahead of their. Um, interviews with people who are willing to, you know, run through a, a quick um, interview. So uh, I, ideally, um, yeah, it, it should be it should be something that is uh, very strong and heavy in leadership and, and can be delegated out. Oh, cool. I think we can step forward. So next up is a uh, director of workshops. Um, Armando, oh, I can. Uh, yeah, I can take that. Nicholas. Uh, let me put my camera on real quick. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so hey everyone, my name is Armando. I'm one of the uh, directors of activities for Cougar CS for a semester. There's also Eric. I don't think he was able to uh, make it today, but yeah, he's the other director of activities. So um, right now uh, on the slide, you'll see director of workshops, which we're kind of trying to, uh, like Nicholas had stated earlier, uh, under activities, it's going to be like three separate uh, positions actually now. So uh, in the bullets, you can actually see uh, a, uh, what the uh, role would entail, but I'll just summarize it briefly. So the director of workshops uh, is responsible for managing and helping put together any of our professional or uh, technical development uh, workshops. So um, you'll be the point of contact for any uh, workshop events. And you can also hold your, your, um, your own workshop events if you like as well. Uh, between all of the officers, there's um, pretty much always a diverse set of skills among everyone. So if you're interested in uh, having something you enjoy doing, uh, maybe you like working with uh, Arduinos or are really good with uh, web development, um, et, et cetera, you're more than welcome to set up a, a workshop for that or uh, bring, in your, bring in your own ideas. And um, another thing is I believe that any position in charge of events is going to be a big responsibility, but because of that, it's very valuable and rewarding in the end. So uh, what I mean by that is like having a good set of events is what really attracts uh, members. So these types of roles have the potential for uh, a really large impact uh, within the organization. So I definitely recommend checking it out if that's something that interests you. And another thing you build with this is um, uh, you really build your communication skills with these types of, uh, by being in charge of events, because um, you have to, you pretty much have to manage who's going to be there and then keep uh, staying in communication with them or with uh, uh, I don't think this one's going to be in charge of companies anymore, but that's another way uh, to just get you get get that fear out of communicating with people to set something up. Um, but other than that, uh, I can move to the next slide or if Nicholas, if you want to add yeah, something um, to Yeah, yeah. One. So um, yeah, just to kind of elaborate on uh, what Armando said. So uh, this semester and, uh, and in previous years, we've always had uh, two directors of activities and um, those directors activities would kind of split the roles of uh, doing technical and professional events. Uh, by these, we mean, you know, our full stack development bootcamp or the uh, career fair 101, you know, these, these different events that we have to um, develop member skills. Um, the director of activities would be responsible for, you know, those technical and professional events, uh, as well as our socials, as well as our uh, company relationships. So uh, this semester, we're deciding to kind of split that up into individual, uh, you know, responsibility groups to kind of uh, lighten the load for uh, each one of the uh, officers that are uh, involved. So as you can see, we're, we're not only growing the team, but we're also uh, delegating it. So it's specifically to um, a responsibility. Uh, so uh, th this next semester, uh, Eric Kai, who's our current director of activities, will move on to a uh, director of corporate relations and he will manage our um, company relationships, um, sponsorship and getting a uh, company events on our calendar. Uh, where director of workshops come in, uh, as, as Eric mentioned, is uh, basically getting professional and technical development events uh, on our calendar. So for this, this is, uh, yeah, like, like, uh, like Armando said, big communication role. Um, the, the biggest part here is coordinating between uh, guest speakers, um, yeah, activities, uh, like your activities group, as well as like, you know, the vice president of activities to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Uh, we have a nice spread of events that we're uh, covering what members are interested to hear. And uh, we're able to, um, 
yeah, just basically just maintain anything related to our uh, workshops. We, we want to make sure our um, workshops are executed well. So this, this role is a, is a coordination role for that. Cool. And I think we can step forward. Yeah, so, this so is, uh, oh, yeah, I can oh, yeah, so how are you? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, so for the uh, director of socials, this can also be thought of uh, pretty much as everything I said from the uh, previous slide in terms of value. But now instead of uh, workshops, you're pretty much in charge of handling any uh, social events. Uh, for example, the Halloween social that we just had not too long ago. Um, again, this is uh, another one that uh, has lots of opportunity for impact here, since this is a role responsible of uh, events. And uh, great social can really make an organization stand out. So we're really looking for someone who can uh, connect uh, just connect with our members and just set up something fun for everyone because uh, yeah the workshops are more for technical things but the shows the socials are where we want to uh, attract people and just have a good time so nicholas i'm not sure if you want to add something else to this yeah um you know a big a big um a big uh feedback a big, biggest feedback we got from our members this semester is that we didn't do enough social events and i, I totally agree um it's not a very uh, a particular strong suit of mine uh and I wasn't able to dedicate a ton of energy into uh, you know, getting good social on the calendar. So now we're in creating a, a role specifically for um, basically facilitating community and uh, you know, bringing members out, uh, connecting members with each other. Uh, we wanna throw some more socials on our, on our calendar. Um, the great thing about socials is they don't require a ton of planning. It's mainly just having someone who can kind of take the wheel and uh, get things on our calendar and um, you know, connect members with each other. Um, we wanna do a lot of informal socials a casual, oh, you know, we're on Discord. Come, come vibe with us on Discord and, and uh, play games with us or hang out or, you know, come meet with us in person for a study session, you know, kind of casual things that don't require a lot of planning. Uh, and then we also want to throw uh, lar larger socials too. Uh, at the end of the semester, we're throwing a fall banquet, you know, to uh, basically kind of a big party to uh, com uh, commemorate the year and, uh, uh, you know, just celebration, announcing team. Uh, this is where the director of socials will come in. Uh, another big responsibility being a point of contact between uh, Cougar CS and other student organizations. Um, so when we want to collaborate with other student orgs or need to, to contact, you would kind of be, you'd be that first person that they talk to and um, you're, you're their entry point uh, into the organization, uh, kind of a liaison. So uh, again, another big role on communication and just some, you, you have to know how to throw a good time. No, that's all. And I, that, that skill can be learned, so no worries. Cool. Uh, Director of Operations, um, Adarsh, can you you mind uh, taking this one? Okay, I can I can take. Uh, okay, so Director of Operations. So uh, this role is is the uh, last role in the activities uh, category. Um, the goal of operations is to plan and execute uh, the logistics for our events. Um, you know, each one of these in person events we hold there is a surprising amount of thought that goes into making sure that things um, go well, that people are confused, uh, people like the, the event like signage and people know where to go where. Um, there's a lot of planning uh, that goes into yeah. uh, making sure that, yeah, people, people uh, can ha have a successful event. Uh, yeah. Josh, do you wanna talk about uh, that? Yeah, so like the, the main uh, responsibilities is to plan and execute all the hybrid and in-person events and so that means coordinating the camera feed and the um, like slides and everything in, in like really conveniently into the Teams or Zoom or whatever we're using to stream. It's also making sure that um, there's enough seating and uh, if we're doing food, making sure all the food paperwork is in uh, order, making sure uh, you get all the food and uh, you follow the health guidelines. Um, as well as uh, recruiting and leading uh, the operations team. Uh, and what we do is um, we, we, we work together to plan and execute on all these events. Um, and that's yeah. like, that's the, the long and short of what uh, Director of Operations does. Yeah, I, I gotta say that this role is, is a lot of fun. I mean, there's, there's definitely a, a fun community that's around like the operations committee. I mean, we're always, uh, hanging out in the office uh, when we have an event where, you know, helping each other move and then, uh, you know, set things up, tear things down at the end. Um, it sounds like work, but it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's definitely fun. Like uh, I, I um, it, and if you guys, uh, if you guys don't end up getting the role for director of operations, definitely join the committee. It's a good time. Um, yeah, you, it's another leadership position where you can uh, recruit and lead your own uh, uh, operations committee, which will help uh, with the logistics and um, execution of the event. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
And that is about it for all our open positions. Um, so for the rest of this time, we're here to take questions. Um, we went through a lot of information. I, I'll go ahead and um, send a copy of the slides. Uh, let me actually share the link right now in the chat. Um, but yeah, guys, we're here to take any questions that you guys might have. Uh, feel free to unmute yourselves or drop something in the chat. Um, but yeah, the application is open as of um, as of this Tuesday, and it closes on the 12th. So definitely get your application in. Yeah, I'm not looking at the chat if anyone's dropping any questions. Assistant to the party planning committee in chief. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, yeah, guys, any questions? This time is yours. I'm thinking we explain things too well. Maybe. Hi, so I do have a question. What's up? Okay, so on the elections breakdown document on Google Docs, mm -hmm. uh, it also says that there's a director of information security position yes is that uh, also... go ahead is that also like um a part of what you can apply for uh yeah so uh the director of uh, information security uh we have already made that appointment uh, so it won't actually be a part of um it won't actually be a part of uh, this this uh, election round uh, but it was a, the appointment is to going to a student who was the one who kind of um, uh, championed this idea to uh, increase uh, awareness about cybersecurity and um, make you know basically support uh, people who have interest in that area a bit more. So um, they it was it was their brainchild and uh, and so the, they they uh, they're assuming that role. And by the way, guys, that's that's oh, that's totally an option. If you guys have cool ideas, uh, we our officer team is not fixed. Uh, we we grow and shrink this based on uh, you know need. Um, you know, different years we have, have different people with, um, with you know, skill sets in different areas. So, like, uh, it, uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, our, this guy, uh, Z Chen, you guys might have, uh, might have had it with him once or twice, but he has a, a great passion in cybersecurity. So, he, uh, he kind of um, uh, advocated for this idea. All right, cool. Thanks. For sure. Can't hear you, Vanessa. I just see your mouth moving. All right, guys, any questions? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Yes. OK, I was just I was literally making a joke. I was just being like, uh, I would suggest maybe instating a director of keyboard building. I could definitely assume that role. Yeah, that was it. That was it. <laughs> Hope it was worth the wait, you guys. Definitely, <laughs> definitely worth it. I want to see it. I'm really excited for the keyboard workshop. We should get a director of 3D printing. That'd be great. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm actually. Uh, you guys, if any of y'all have been paying attention to the to the promotions. We're having a keyboard workshop on November 11th, a build your own keyboard workshop. I'm flashing the microcontrollers for them right now. Ooh. So if you want to make your own little baby keyboard like this one. Hey, one that's, the finish? that's the finished product? Let me see. This is the prototype. Oh, that's so sick. Fuck yeah. yeah. That looks so cool. That looks so Let cool. me, look, while we're all just here, I'll show you the back too. So here's the microcontroller and then there's all the wiring. Um, I'm flashing all the microcontrollers right now. Um, we've got all the supplies, you guys. So get excited. Yeah, come Save out. Save the date, November eleventh. Uh, sure. Be there. Isn't that um, all you need? November eleventh from the movie. V? Also Veterans oh. Day. Yeah. All you need is three three keys, though. Am I right? Four. Control C and V. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a binary keyboard. It's zero one backspace and enter <laughs> so what switches though interesting. uh ink blacks but everyone else is going to be using gator on browns because y'all <laughs> it's a free event okay That's listen we ain't got we're not millionaires <laughs> all right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah i got them right here the mx browns 
Mm, I'm excited. Get excited. Uh, I'm oh, just going to yeah. answer a question that no one asked. Um, on the <laughs> officer application, you guys are going to see like a few like long, uh, what is it, like free response questions. Um, don't let these scare you off. You don't have to write your life story into them. It's purely a space for you to add any supplementary information, but definitely they're optional for a reason. You guys don't need to fill those out. Um, yeah, it, it definitely doesn't hurt your, uh, your chances one bit. No one asked, bro. No one asked. But <laughs> just so you know. Now you know. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, if you all remember the April Fool's joke that Stack Overflow had, with the with the like the tiny keyboard yeah the keyboard that they launched yeah that's what that reminds me of yeah <laughs> yeah it's very similar it's i mean I, yeah basically i could have honestly okay here's the thing just because unless someone has a question about like this stuff please interrupt me because this is just like talking about the keyboard stuff but i can tell you how to turn this into that i can i can make these keys a, a c and a v and this a control so this could become that. Come to the workshop. Uh, <laughs> Come to the workshop. <laughs> Make your own. <laughs> yes, Frank, that's my uh, crypto miner GPU that pooped the bed not two days ago. You have a GPU? Yeah, it's a 1080 Ti. It's right there. You have it just for crypto? Yeah. Yeah. Poor, poor baby. It's been mining nonstop for about four and a half years and it finally died. What happened to it? Oh, it died, bro. Like, what do you mean it died? Cool. So I got, um, sorry guys, I got a question. Um, says on the Google Doc that we must be available during winter. Does that mean winter break? So this does mean winter break. Um, by availability, it doesn't mean like you know cancel all your plans. Uh, you know every single day we're meeting on campus. It's more like just be available for like discussions. Um, we might meet on a like biweekly basis just to um planning for the organization. Um. I think like it's pretty much gonna it's gonna be different for each officer, but it's uh yeah mainly for planning. It's not um it's not like uh yeah it's not it's not like a hard commitment. Um, basically like don't don't by available in winter like don't don't be like completely unaccessible during the winter. Like let let us message you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm moving into like either Shub or Shuba's place just to be available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it means you gotta like you gotta move in with us. We we have a we have a Cougar yeah, Cougar's house hostel. coming soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coming soon. Yo, a Cougar's house or, mansion. Or yeah, yeah, soon, soon. <laughs> Dude, I thought you lived in the basement of PGH. What are you saying? <laughs> where I'm at right now. <laughs> Why do you think the walls are concrete? That is the Cougar CS house. Man. <laughs> we still haven't got the futon, man. We need the futon. We need to get bankrolled by an alumni, and then we'll and then we'll have a mansion. That that's coming next. Dude, when I graduate, Shub's guys, gonna be an alumni. <laughs> yeah, okay. Shub's gonna be a NASA. Shub, side eye. Okay, side eye. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's the application to be sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> make it right now. Make it right now. Someone make it. Yeah, <laughs> make Google form quick, quick. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? I just asked it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the requirement is uh, requirement is you must be an alumni, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, true. When you get when you sign your offer, we're we're reaching out to you. I know how much money you make. Like we're coming. <laughs> okay. Cougar CS takes cut off your offers. <laughs> we get ten percent of your income. 10%. It's tied. <laughs> yeah, trade offer. We get 10% of your income. You get uh, raspberry pies. I don't know. Something. You get one pro micro. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh my God. This is a bad value that's, trade, but I agree. That's stealing the world, dude. All right, man. All right, guys. You, guys. But, uh, yeah, does anybody have any uh, questions? Like, there's no more questions. Last call for questions. All right. Nothing. All right. If you have, if you have and questions think, after this uh, event is over, feel free to like message each one of us who has the role or Nicholas uh, for director of code or vice president of code red. You can message me or any other uh, officers. So, so yeah, do that. Yeah, and Discord, um, Discord is the best way to reach us, probably. For sure. 
Um, we're all on Discord. If you guys go on our Discord channel and um, at the top, there's like Fall 21 officers. You can see all of our handles there. So um, yeah, feel free. It's definitely good to reach out to officers who formerly were in that position to um, get like any cues. But um, yeah, uh, hope this was useful for you guys. Uh, we're going to post this recording on YouTube. I'll try to get that in by um, end of today. And uh, yeah, we'll send that on, on our um, on our other platforms. Yeah. So, on cool. that note, Nicholas, someone actually reached out to me over group me. I didn't I didn't realize they could find me there. They <laughs> say, "Hey, you're the webmaster." Right? I'm like, "Oh, hello." <laughs> yes. Yeah, <I'm> <laughs> so, well, yeah. all right, guys. Hope everyone has right. an awesome weekend. Thank you all for coming out. Yep. Take it easy. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Good luck with the Thank you. How do I leave? Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>